All right, so get this. Today we are going deep into Blackstone. Blackstone? Yeah, Blackstone. Their real estate empire. Okay, I'm intrigued. Like, imagine you owned the Willis Tower. Wow. Or a whole chain of luxury hotels. That's Blackstone. That is some serious real estate. And we've got a ton of info on them today. Oh, yeah. Articles, investment summaries, even a list of some of their crazy holdings. So we're going to unlock how they do it. That's the plan. Unlock the secrets of this real estate titan. You know me, though. What's that? I always love a good treasure hunt. Uh-huh. Well, let's start with the basics. Just how big are we talking? Yeah, they're not exactly like flipping houses on the weekends, right? No, not at all. Blackstone's real estate portfolio is massive. Global reach. Billions and billions in assets. And they have a strategy for just about every corner of the market. So they're not just buying buildings. They're shaping skylines. Absolutely. Influencing entire markets. Their decisions have a ripple effect through the global economy. Okay, so we're talking Monopoly board on steroids. Basically. But they didn't get this big by Leva, like throwing darts at a map. No, there's a method to the madness for sure. So break it down for me. What's the strategy? Well, they have a multi-layered approach. The materials you provided actually do a great job outlining it. All right, well, let's hear it. So their foundation is core investments. Think of it as their safe bet. Safe bet, like if I was being careful with my monopoly money. Exactly. So high quality properties, steady income. Think office buildings with long-term leases, shopping centers in prime locations. So like the reliable friend who always pays their rent on time. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Consistent, stable returns. Makes sense. Steady and reliable. But what about those value-add investments? Those sound more up my alley. Oh, you like a little risk. A little creativity, yeah. Well, that's where Blackstone gets more hands-on. They find properties that are maybe a bit undervalued or need some work. They might invest in renovations, improve the management, and then sell for a profit. Okay, so they're flipping houses, but on like a, a mega scale. But we've also got these opportunistic investments. And those sound even riskier. True, higher stakes. Higher potential rewards, too. Okay, spill the tea. What kind of properties are we talking about here? This is where Blackstone looks for those hidden gems that everyone else is overlooking. Mm. Like maybe a property in a struggling market or that needs a complete overhaul. Like a fixer-upper. Yeah. Remember that hotel chain mentioned in the materials? Mm -hmm. The one that was struggling? Blackstone swooped in, turned the whole thing around. Wow, so they're not afraid of a challenge. Not at all. They see potential where others see risk. Got it. But these categories, they're pretty broad. That's true. Do they invest in like all types of real estate or just certain ones? Well, they definitely diversify, you know, spread the risk. They do residential, commercial, logistics, even hospitality. Okay, break it down for me. So residential, we're talking apartments, condos, single family rentals. Right, and with rent prices going up, I bet Blackstone's all over that. Oh yeah, and their involvement in the single family rental market. It's been big news. What have they done? After 2008, you know, when everything crashed, they bought up tons of foreclosed homes. At a discount. Exactly. Yeah. And then they created this company, Invitation Homes. It's like one of the biggest single-family rental companies in the U.S. So Blackstone's like a mega landlord now. Yeah. And you can see how that's been a bit controversial. Definitely. Okay, but what about commercial real estate? With everyone shopping online now, I bet that's been tricky. Oh, for sure. Traditional offices and retail centers they're facing challenges. Right. So while Blackstone owns a piece of the Chicago skyline with the Willis Tower, they're also adapting to how people shop and work now. Exactly. But it's not all doom and gloom. Blackstone sees potential in some areas, like logistics. Logistics. So like not exactly as glamorous as the skyscraper. No, but think about it. Logistics is like the backbone of e-commerce. Yeah. Warehouses, distribution centers, it's how everything gets delivered. Okay, I see. So they're investing in the behind the scenes of online shopping. Yeah, they're betting big on that whole network. Oh. And then there's hospitality. Ah, hotels. So are they going for luxury, budget friendly, or what? Well, that's the interesting part. Their investments in hospitality can tell us a lot about where they think travel is headed. Eco resorts, mm -hmm. business hotels. It's like they're trying to predict the future of travel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And those decisions can reveal a lot. So it's not just about buying properties. It's about like making bets on how we'll work and live and travel in the future. That's a great way to put it. It's like they're holding up a mirror to the future of real estate. Oh. 
But this is just the beginning, right? Oh, yeah? We've just skimmed the surface of how they do what they do. Exactly. I want to know more about how they manage all these properties and like what it all means for the rest of us. That's where things get even more interesting. We'll dig into that in the next part. All right. So we've talked about their strategies. We saw how massive Blackstone is. Even got a glimpse of their super impressive property list. But now I got to ask, so what? Yeah, the big question, right? I mean, most of us aren't going to buy skyscrapers anytime soon, so why should we care about this real estate giant? That's a fair point. Mm -hmm. But, you know, their decisions, they actually have a huge impact on our daily lives. Wait, really? These big financial players affect us regular folks? Oh, absolutely. Their moves, they send ripples that reach way beyond Wall Street. Like how? Think about rent prices, mm -hmm. the cost of things we buy, even how our cities look. Blackstone's involved in all of that. Okay, I see. So if Blackstone's buying tons of apartments, that affects how much rent I pay. Exactly. And if they're pouring money into logistics, well, that impacts how quickly our online orders arrive. Ah, uh, I'm starting to get it. It's not just about buying and selling buildings. They're shaping the systems we all rely on. Exactly. And because they're such a major player, their actions can be seen as a signal. Yeah. Kind of like a barometer for where things are headed. Interesting. So like... If they're investing heavily in renewable energy for their buildings, that tells us something. Exactly. It suggests they see that as the future. And their decisions could influence other companies to do the same. So Blackstone's like a giant crystal ball for real estate. Uh-huh. In a way, yeah. Yeah. But you know they're not always right. Right, they're not perfect. They make mistakes, just like everyone. And their interests might not always be the best for everyone else. That makes me think about what we were discussing earlier about invitation homes. Oh, right. They saw an opportunity after 2008 to buy up those foreclosed homes. Yeah. But some people argue that actually contributed to higher rents, made it harder for families to buy homes. Right. And that's why it's so important to look at these things critically. Blackstone's actions have consequences. It's important to weigh the good and the bad. So it's not just about understanding their strategies, it's about questioning their motives, thinking about the impact on everyone, not just the big investors. I couldn't agree more. That's why I think these conversations we're having are so vital. Totally. Makes you realize we can all be a part of this conversation, you know? Asking questions, demanding transparency. Absolutely. We have a role to play. And speaking of questioning things, let's go back to that idea you brought up before about Blackstone being a trendsetter or a trend follower. Right. Are they driving change or just going with the flow? Tough question. Think about their investments in logistics. Are they pouring money in because they see e-commerce continuing to boom or just reacting to what's already happening? It's like the chicken or the egg, but with real estate and billions of dollars. Right. And there's no easy answer. It's probably a bit of both. They're analyzing trends, taking chances, and sometimes those chances pay off big time. Absolutely. And sometimes they miss the mark. But the important thing is their decisions have a ripple effect. Okay, so they might not always be leading the charge, but everyone's watching what they do. Yeah. So understanding their motivations, their strategies, it helps us understand the bigger picture. How the whole real estate world's changing. And ultimately, how that affects all of us. All right, so we've talked about their impact on the market, the economy, even our daily lives. But there's still one piece missing, right? What's that? How do they actually manage this huge empire? It's mind-boggling. Well, that's where asset management comes in. Blackstone's known for being very hands-on. Hands-on. So it's not just buy a building and wait for the rent checks. No way. Think of them as master conductors leading this whole orchestra. An orchestra of property managers and contractors and all sorts of experts. Exactly. All working together to make sure each investment is performing at its peak. So they're constantly tweaking things, making improvements, always trying to increase the value of a property. You got it. They might invest in eco-friendly upgrades, bring in new technology, even completely rethink how a space is used. Makes sense in a world where everything's changing so fast. Technology, the way people live, even global events that shake up the market. You're hitting all the key points. Mm. And that brings us to another crucial part of their approach, risk management. Right, because even the best plans can go wrong. Exactly. You can't predict everything. So Blackstone has entire teams dedicated to analyzing markets, yeah. spotting potential issues, and figuring out ways to protect their investments. Wow. I'm picturing a room full of people, like, glued to their computers, crunching numbers, trying to see into the future. Uh-huh. It's pretty intense. They use data analysis, financial models, and good old-fashioned market intuition. So they're not just taking wild guesses. No. 
They're trying to be as strategic as possible. And one of their biggest strategies is diversification. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Exactly. They spread their investments around. Mm -hmm. Different types of properties, different locations, even different asset classes. So if one area of the market takes a hit, they're not totally wiped out. Right. They've got a safety net built in. But, you know, with all this focus on profits and market analysis, I wonder, do they even think about sustainability? Right. That seems like a big deal these days, especially for real estate. It is a big deal. And even a giant like Blackstone is feeling the pressure to be more responsible. They're realizing that those environmental and social factors, you know, ESG, it can actually affect their bottom line. ESG. I've heard that term, but to be honest, I'm not totally sure what it means. It basically means taking into account a company's impact on the environment, on society, and how they govern themselves. Okay. So for Blackstone, that means considering things like how energy efficient a building is, how their investments affect the community, even how diverse their leadership team is. Exactly. It's about realizing that making money and doing good aren't mutually exclusive. Right. So it's not just about making as much money as possible. It's about making money in a way that benefits everyone. You got it. It's a big shift in how companies are thinking about their role in the world. Definitely. And I think it's a shift in the right direction. Me too. But it's complex. There's so much to unpack when it comes to sustainability and how these ideas actually work in the real world. For sure. It feels like we've just scratched the surface here. We have. But that's a perfect lead in to our final segment. We'll delve even deeper into the so what of it all. What can we learn from Blackstone's successes and even their failures? What does it all mean for us regular folks trying to navigate this ever-changing world? I'm ready to find out. All right, so we've covered a lot of ground, haven't we? Blackstone's strategies, their global reach, and even how they're thinking about sustainability. It's a lot to take in. But like we've been saying, the real question is, what does it all mean? Yeah, what's the takeaway for the average person? Right, because most of us aren't buying skyscrapers anytime soon. So how do all these, you know, big financial moves actually affect us? It's a good question. I think it gives us a window into how the world of real estate is changing, you know, and what's shaping our cities and communities. Okay, so they're not just playing a high stakes game of Monopoly. They're making decisions that impact where we live, how we work, even how we shop. Exactly. By understanding their strategies, we can get a sense of what they see as the big opportunities, the big challenges in real estate. So, like, what are some of those takeaways? What's jumping out at you as really significant? Well, one thing that strikes me is how willing Blackstone is to adapt and evolve. They're not stuck in the old ways of doing things. Right. They're constantly looking for the next big thing, embracing new ideas. Precisely. And you can see that in their investments in areas like logistics and technology. They're recognizing that the future of real estate isn't just about physical buildings. It's about data. It's about automation. It's about creating seamless experiences. Ah, so that's where technology comes in. Are they investing in things like smart buildings or those prop tech startups? Absolutely. They're putting money into companies that are developing those cutting edge technologies for property management, data analysis, even things like improving the experience for tenants. So they're not just buying properties. They're investing in the tools that are going to shape how we live in those properties. Exactly. And that's what I find so exciting. It's like we're seeing real estate, finance, and technology all coming together. And Blackstone's right at the heart of it. Right. It's not just about the buildings themselves anymore. It's a whole ecosystem. But, you know, it's not just about fancy gadgets either, right? We have to talk about the human side of things. Like, how are they dealing with affordability and the impact their investments have on real people? That's a huge question. And one Blackstone's facing more and more they're realizing that long-term success isn't just about profits. It's about making a positive impact. We talked about ESG before, but I'm really curious to hear more about how those ideas, you know, environmental and social responsibility, are actually showing up in their decisions. Okay, well, for example, they're incorporating sustainability measures into how they design and operate their buildings. They're looking at energy-efficient technology, reducing waste, even making their buildings more resilient to climate change. So it's not just about ticking boxes. They're making real changes that are good for the planet and good for business. Exactly. And they're also paying more attention to 
the social impact of their investments, like exploring ways to create more affordable housing, supporting local businesses, even getting communities more involved. So they're trying to be more than just a faceless corporation. They're trying to be a responsible member of the communities where they invest. That's the direction they seem to be moving in. And it's something we're seeing across the real estate industry, this focus on aligning their goals with what communities actually need. I think that's really encouraging. But we have to remember, it's still early days, right? Sorry. We need to keep holding these companies accountable, make sure they actually follow through. 100% agree. Transparency, accountability, and honest conversations, that's how we make sure the future of real estate is one that works for everyone. All right, well, we've learned a lot today, haven't we? From how Blackstone invests, their global scale, to how they're thinking about sustainability and social impact. It's been a really fascinating deep dive. Yeah, and I hope our listeners are walking away with a better understanding of what's happening in the world of real estate and how it affects them. Because whether you're renting an apartment, ordering takeout, or just walking down the street, the decisions of companies like Blackstone are shaping the world around you. Exactly. And by understanding those decisions, we can all be more informed, ask the right questions, and demand a better future. That's the power of knowledge. And it's up to all of us to use it. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> well, that wraps up our deep dive into Blackstone's real estate empire. Thanks for joining us. And until next time, remember, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep learning.